Technical clarify, CHIP is covered through, kids above 100% of the federal poverty level are covered through CHIP, Title 21 of the Social Security Act. Kids under that are covered through Medicaid or Title 19. But in Louisiana, we don't treat them as separate programs. And, and I don't remember the exact year. It was during the Foster administration. On the Foster administration. Yes. Do you remember who the secretary was of the department? <laughs> I believe Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal. Uh, Governor Jindal. Uh, and I, I will say that, I mean, it, CHIP was expanded again in 08 to 250 percent of the federal poverty level with the, the um, CHIP uh, affordable plan where they would pay a monthly premium. I think covering children has always been a priority of this administration. So, so we have 96 percent of our children uh, covered in Louisiana. I mean, that's remarkable. Let me say mm -hmm. that. I, I'm like uh, Senator Colomb. I, I'd love to see the other 4 percent. But, but I think back in those days, I believe when, when then Secretary General uh, um, implemented that program, Louisiana was recognized as being a leader, uh, you know, in those types of reforms. And, and uh, uh, I believe we got a lot of accolades. Do you all remember any of that? Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, we, we did a lot of outreach. We did excellent in terms of what, you know, the federal government thought in terms of the number of kids that we were able to reach through the program. So once again, I commend, you know, uh, the then Thickest Secretary, you know, Governor General, and I see uh, a previous secretary in the back, uh, David Hood, here with us as well, that, that led in that. And I, I kind of remember those meetings years ago. Uh, as I said, the older I get, the fuzzier it get. But I thank you for you know, allow me to be reminded of who was there. Um, you know, I, ha I have a letter here. You, you mentioned we don't need to worry about the $307 million, or it's really no big concern. But, but the letter that I have says that the deferred, deferral action will be reflected on your next grant award. When is that next grant award? The grant award is this fall, which will be for fis the fiscal year um, that starts October 1st from till September 30th. The effects of it, though, we would not come into play until the last quarter of that, of that, of that federal fiscal year. So would that, that would affect the next fiscal next year? Fisc our next fiscal year. Yeah. So... So next fall, I, I hope we're not in session next fall, Mr. Chairman. I think we leave here in June. But, but uh, I mean, it, if it was going to affect next year's budget, uh, uh, about $307 million, would, would you think we might need a special call legislative session? How would we deal with $307 million? Well, again, I, I certainly believe this issue will be resolved prior to that. Uh, it says here you should also adjust your next PMS drawdown by the amount of the deferral. So do we have plans to cut to $307 million and, and, and what that's going to impact? Uh, Jeff oh, That's next year. And, 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 but, but listen, uh, we won't be here until spring of, you know, uh, 2016. Um, Jeff 2015. Yeah, 2015, and you would have time I'm telling you, I'm, for, I'm forgetful. 2015. Um, in that letter, Senator, um, that, that the, the CMS says we should uh, reduce our next draw by that amount. Should means it's optional, it's at the discretion of the state, and they're not mandating that we reduce our, our next draw. And at this point in time, we have not uh, reduced our draw by 307. So, but you have not reduced it at this point? Yes, sir. But, but when do you plan to reduce it? Uh, not till it's resolved with okay. CMS until so I assume if say, we take if we do adjust it somebody's going to get less dollars than what they expect on the current plan is that true well again uh, our intent is to have it resolved and that well, it would not affect anything and, and certainly mine too and I, I know none of us want to lose 307 million but at the same time I mean they're directing us what we need to do here you know deduct it from your next well, PMS drawdown, and, and I mean, that's what CMS recommends. Uh, I, I, but, 
I think it's helpful, Senator, to, to really understand the context of that letter. And really it was an unexpected occurrence in that we knew that we were paying claims against a, a pending state plan amendment. Um, the letter, the CMS had a specific time frame that they had to sort of put on the record that those claims were being paid against a pending state plan amendment and in no way reflects the approvability or, or the process of the actual approval of the state plan amendment which would negate the whole deferral process. Yeah. But you did indicate a few minutes ago that the, the plan is moving forward. Is that right? The state plan amendment? Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, has, has the time frame started, the 60 days? We control that in terms of when we put it back on the clock, and we wouldn't do that until we felt we had come to the resolution of the issue. So it's not moving forward yet. It's not on the clock yet. Is that right? It's not on the clock. The amendments are not on the clock. Again, with CMS, it is always a better strategy to wait until you've worked it out with them in terms of what's approvable and non-approvable before you put it on the clock. But we consider, again, our meetings with them, our discussions with them as continuing to move the amendments forward. So we've got plans up there, and we've got this clock somewhere, and we haven't started the clock yet. I guess that's where we at, but but I understood from your previous comments that that these plan amendments was moving forward. Well, but again, they're really not moving forward. Well, again, it depends on, I mean, with CMS, you know, moving forward is is that we are having discussions with them, back and forth, meetings with them, and again, that, that CMS as well as us consider that moving those amendments forward. But you forward. said you control that, so when are you going to move them forward when so the clock starts ticking. We will, we will again, once CMS gets back to us and we have some understanding of what is approvable and what they're con if they have any additional concerns and we resolve those, again, it's, it is typically a very long process. But I, I, Madam Secretary, and again, I have tremendous respect for you, but, but this letter really concerns me. The referral, deferred amount will be held out of the next payment, $307 million. And again, we have received deferrals previously on, on when, because we've paid under, under non-approved state plans. We, we've done this before and we have received approval of those pan, plans previously. But, but your deputy uh, secretary stated before this committee last week uh, that you've also had to pay the dollars back. On, on, on some occasions, but not on all, most of the occasions of deferral, we get approved spent, um, plan amendments and they pay us. So we have it. I mean, it's not every case that that has occurred. There's very few cases that we've actually had to pay back. But it was several hundred million dollars. Uh, but anyway, we, we can move forward. I know the chairman, we all need to move this. Uh, uh, the, con uh, the fiscal office that, that was here, would you come back to the table? Uh, this fiscal note that you prepared is, is not on any specific plan, is that right? It is a straight, sorry, it is a straight Medicaid expansion. It's not a specific plan. So if our, if our plan that was submitted by DHH to CMS for approval uh, provided for co-pays or other types of payments in order to participate, is none of that reflected in here, right? Not, but it would be assumed that it would net against the cost. The state and and you did indicate that, you know, if, if uh, not allowed physician costs was not, it, not it, a part of this, it could be 100 to $200 million? Well, non-allowable physician costs.